The story behind Hamilton's writing of the Federalist Papers is just amazing. He was a practicing lawyer at the time. He'd spend a day at the office litigating cases, defending clients. Then he'd come home and dash off a couple of Federalist Papers. Federal 78 was Alexander Hamilton's famous defense of the proposed federal judiciary. His argument that it would be the branch that was least dangerous to the rights of the people. He was responding to an argument made by a critic of the federal judiciary who wrote under the pen name Brutus. Brutus argued they have made the judges independent in the fullest sense of the word. There is no power above them to control any of their decisions. There is no authority that can remove them and they cannot be controlled by the laws of the legislature. In short, they are independent of the people, of the legislature, and of every power under heaven. It's not hard to find echoes of the arguments we hear today about the Supreme Court. Modern criticism of the court for going too far in asserting judicial supremacy, for not respecting the other branches or respecting federalism, and that's what Hamilton was responding to when he defended the judiciary defended its power of judicial review, and defended life tenure. Hamilton isn't advocating that we should give independence to judges simply to free them from the constraints of law and government. Rather, he's giving them independence in a very specific context, in the context of the other branches of government. So the most obvious way that judicial independence helps to check the other branches is it prevents Congress, especially, and also the executive branch, from overrunning the judiciary, from forcing their hand, and it gives the judge a space to use his best judgment in accordance with the code, the legal code, and the precedents uh, to decide the cases faithfully under the Constitution and the laws. The judge exercises discretion in a very limited way after the Constitution, the statutes, the regulations, and the precedents have all been evaluated and brought to bear on the case. There might be the small measure of judgment at the end that the court needs to exercise. But what's important is up to that point, a judge is faithfully reading the laws that bind him. And on top of that, Hamilton recognized that the best judges would be produced by a lifetime of study, of study of the laws, the legal code, the precedents, all the things a judge needs to do in order to faithfully execute his office. That was the purpose of judicial independence, the idea that these judges would need to be protected from the other branches, or else they wouldn't be able to do their job correctly and they wouldn't have the incentive to leave practice and serve in government. When the court is called upon more and more to decide ever more controversial issues, social issues, cultural issues, issues of competing rights, to decide these cases for society, sometimes once and for all, it's extremely important for the court to exercise the self-restraint that Hamilton promised it would in Federalist 78. Hamilton had an incredibly systematic mind and a clear mind. It always, in the end, came back down to government as a whole and finding a way to ensure that the system as a whole hangs together and succeeds. Hamilton is pressing the case for constitutionalism. Mm -hmm.